This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohamed. Deeper and more entrenched divisions over Russia's war in Ukraine risk derailing progress on issues such as food security, debt distress, and global cooperation on climate change when the world's most powerful nations meet this weekend in New Delhi. The ardent stance on the war has prevented agreement on even a single communique at the 20 or so ministerial meetings of the G20 during India's presidency this year, leaving it to the leaders to find a way around if possible. But China will be represented by Premier Li Qiang, not President Xi Jinping, while Russia has confirmed President Vladimir Putin's absence, suggesting that neither nation is likely to join any consensus. That means the two-day summit from September 9th will be dominated by the West and its allies. The G20 leaders who will attend include US President Joe Biden, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, French President Emmanuel Macron, Saudi Arabia's Mohammed bin Salman, and Japan's Fumio Kishida. A failed summit would expose the limits of cooperation between Western and non-Western powers and prompt countries to double down on the groups they are more comfortable with, analysts said. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will try to convince Kremlin chief Vladimir Putin to return to a Ukraine green export deal that helped ease a global food crisis when the two leaders meet in Russia's Black Sea resort of Sochi on Monday. Russia quit the deal in July, a year after it was brokered by the United Nations and Turkey, complaining that its own food and fertilizer exports faced obstacles that not enough Ukrainian grain was going to countries in need. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that the talks with Erdogan, who previously played a significant role in convincing Putin to stick with the deal, would take place in the middle of the day, Moscow time. The deal was aimed at getting grain from Ukraine to world market through the Black Sea and easing a global food crisis that the United Nations said had been worsened by Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February last year. Russia and Ukraine are two of the world's key agricultural producers and major players in the wheat, barley, maize, rapeseed, rapeseed oil, sunflower seed and sunflower oil markets. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said he wants Eritrean refugees and migrants involved in a violent clash in Tel Aviv to be deported immediately and has ordered a plan to remove all of the country's African migrants. The remarks came a day after bloody protests by rival groups of Eritreans in South Tel Aviv left dozens of people injured. In quote, we want harsh measures against the rioters, including the immediate deportation of those who took part, Netanyahu said in a special ministerial meeting called to deal with the aftermath of the violence on Sunday. He requested that the ministers present him with plans, in quote, for the removal of all the other illegal infiltrators and noted in his remarks that the Supreme Court struck down some measures meant to coerce the refugees to leave. Under international law, Israel cannot forcibly send migrants back to a country where their life or liberty may be at risk. Ahead of an official visit to Cyprus, Netanyahu said the ministerial team was seeking to deport 1,000 supporters of the Eritrean government who were involved in Saturday's violence. Malaysia has dropped a multi-million dollar corruption case against Deputy Prime Minister Ahmed Zahid Amidi on charges he defrauded the foundation. Zahid had faced 47 charges involving multiple counts of criminal breach of trust, corruption and money laundering related to the misuse of $27 million of funds at Yayasan Akawbodi, a charity he established to eradicate poverty. The Mali Mail reported that George Colin Lawrence Sequera agreed on Monday to grant Zahid a discharge not amounting to an acquittal after the prosecution said it needed more time to look into the case. A discharge not amounting to an acquittal means the prosecution can revive the charges at a later date if it wants. Zahid was charged with corruption in 2018, a few months after the once dominant United Mali's national organization, UMNO, lost power for the first time in 60 years over widespread anger at graft and the multi billion dollar scandal at the 1MDB state fund. A few subway lines in Madrid and high speed train connections with southern cities were closed on Monday morning, and two men were missing after torrential rain hit central Spain. Emergency services were involved in almost 1,200 incidents in the region overnight, and firefighters and police were seeking two missing men in the rural area of Audia de Fresno, southwest of Madrid, said Yave Chivite, the spokesperson of the emergency services in the region. Several roads in the Madrid region were closed as half a dozen bridges were torn down by water overflowing the riverbanks. The sudden torrential rain 
that hit the country transformed streets into rivers in Madrid, Castille, Catalonia, and Valencia regions. Hail also fell in many areas. The heavy rainfall was waning on Monday morning though. Rain continued in most of the country, but the National Weather Agency on Monday lowered the alert level to yellow from orange and red on Sunday. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy New Week!